The next activity under the writing skill is going to be letter writing. Now, this topic is very familiar to you all, isn't it? Yes, you had been coming across this topic right from your grade 3 or 4, but students are finding difficulty in providing an effective letter with the proper format till date. It's just because they are not aware of the exact format or the small nuances that are required to write a letter. But before I could go into the exact layout or format of the different types of letter, let me first brush through the types of letter which you are already aware of. Formal and informal. Am I right? Yes. So, to whom do you write a formal letter? To friends? No. We make it an official letter or it can be for business purposes. Right? When it comes to an informal letter, you write the letter to your friends and family. If you are quite thorough as to whom you write the formal letter and to whom you write the informal letter, you will not have any confusions when it comes to the layout because as I said earlier, both the letters have their unique layouts. Now, many students come up with this doubt. They ask me, ma'am, what is the exact format? What is the exact layout for formal letter or for the informal letter? Well, of course, there are many formats available. Many formats are being followed by many people. Which is the one which I am supposed to use? What, what am I supposed to follow? Well, now, since we are concentrating more on the competitive examinations, just as per, you know, our competitive examinations are mainly designed based on the CBSE and the NCRT curriculum, right? So, I am going to stick on to the format which the CBSC has prescribed. So, this is the layout for a formal letter. You begin the letter with a sender's address. Who is the sender? Initial days we used to have this from address and to address, right? So, we are, though they, those are actually outdated and we will stick on to sender's address. And following the sender's address, you have the date. Now, when it comes to the date, how are we going to write the date? Yes, the general pattern of writing date is like this. For example, 04-03-2018. Am I right? Or we can go with for 04-03-2018. But that format is not actually agreed. Rather, I write my date like this. 4th March 2018. 18. So, this is the correct format, whether it is your letter or any other writing skill where you are expected to write the date, please keep in mind that this is the expected format, right. So, following your sender's address comes your date, then your receiver's address as to whom you are sending the letter. So, keep in mind, you would be sending the letter to a manager or the principal, correspondent, the prime minister, the superintendent. So, keep in mind that when you are writing, 
So, receiver's address you will always add the article the, the editor, the principal, the manager, the correspondent, the chief minister, the prime minister, the minister. So, the the has to be there when you are referring to a person in a formal letter. Of course, it does not matter if you are going to refer the person with the name. If you are not going to mention the person with the name and you are going to mention the person with the position that he or she carries, kindly do not forget to add the. Following the receiver's address, you have the salutation, respected sir, respected madam and nowadays dear sir, dear madam is also agreed. Following your salutation, you have the subject. Why do you write the subject? The subject should give an insight to the person as to what is the reason, the purpose of you writing the letter. Imagine I am writing a letter to the commissioner of police. I have an issue in my area, so I am writing a letter to the commissioner of police. So, every single day the commissioner of police would be flooded with letters from the public. So, how are you going to make it more easy and feasible and you know, uh, so that the commissioner gives immediate attention to your letter? The commissioner, the moment he reads the subject will know what your problem is. So, he will divert the letter to the corresponding departments, so that the action is taken immediately. So, your subject should say the reason as to why you are writing this letter. Following the subject comes your body, your content. In the content part, you need not reintroduce yourself again, because you have already told, you have given your address here, right. So, you can just start off with what your issue is or what are the problem being faced by you or what is the problem being faced by you and go ahead with the action plan required or what the purpose are if you are expecting the commissioner to take some action against the issue which has happened in your area, yes go ahead or you want to give some suggestive measures, suggest some uh, solutions, go ahead. So, that you give it in the content. This can be broken into two, uh, two or three paragraphs, right. And when you finish, complimentary close. What is a complimentary close? Thanking you, right. Thanking you. So, that comes under complimentary close and then you sign and then you write your name beneath. Signature and name. So, this is a simple layout or format for a formal letter. Sender's address, date, receiver's address, salutation, subject, content, complimentary close, signature and name. This was an example. So, I am erasing this off, right. So, this is the format which is required, which is expected you from you when you write a formal letter. Switching over to the informal letter. Now, informal letter you need not be so, you know, professional because that is a letter to your friends and your family. Your friends and your family are not going to expect so much of professionalism in your letter. So, that does not mean that you can write whatever you want, but there is a fixed format for an informal letter also. So, you start off again with the sender's address, again with the date and you skip the receiver's address. You need not write the receiver's address in the informal letter and salutation is the term used for formal letters, whereas for informal letter we say greetings, we say hello dad, we do not say respected dad, am I right? Hello friend, hi friend, dear friend, we do not say respected friend, we do not say respected mom, right. So, we say greetings here, followed by greetings we have subject, but when it comes to your informal letter you do not use a subject, you just start with the content. 
as I said earlier, do not give it as one particular, you know, one paragraph in one particular shot, make it small, simple paragraphs. You can have two to three paragraphs and always in the final paragraph, conclude in such a way, you know, you are expecting a reply from that person or asking that person to convey regards to someone and of course, thanking you is not required because again, they are your friends and your family. You can just put your signature at the end of the letter. So, this is the exact format for an informal letter.